Hi, my name is Chidi. Welcome to this episode of Daily Devotionals or Weekly Devotionals. Um, today we're going to be discussing, we're still on the topic of love, we're still in the month of love, February, and this is going to be our last, I think, video. We're going to be talking about managing expectations, and I think this is very important. Um, so come with me and we'll have this little chat. See you soon. again so we're going to be talking about managing expectations um, in relationships so in relationships and in marriages we're going to be talking about managing expectations and this is because someone told me so many so many years ago maybe 10 years ago someone told me unrealistic expectations is one of the major pitfalls in marriage and I found out to be true Unrealistic. So it doesn't just start when you get married. It starts when you start building up into marriage. For many of us, it starts. It started when we were children, when we were young girls, and we started to watch Disney cartoons. We watch fairy tale movies where the man meets girl and something happens and everything good. They all come together and they get married and they ride away on a horse on a beautiful car and they all live happy ever after. I call it the Cinderella complex. It does not exist. It does not exist anywhere. Even with celebrities, you know, we watch celebrity marriages and they look beautiful and everyone's filled with white roses and red petals and everything and there's a carriage and an expensive car and everything just looks royal and great and we all say oh how lovely oh I'm sure they're gonna have a very very wonderful time I was just listening to something now and it was very amusing for me so a man was preaching about single singles I was preaching to singles about something like this and he said that the only way for there to be happy happily ever after, is for the marriage to end on that day of the wedding, like, that's the end. You know, like in a, like in a movie or like in a cartoon, the end, after they're married, they just drive away, the end. That is the only way, because if it is real life, there's nothing like happily ever after. There are storms, there are trials, there are testings, there is a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of talking together, there's a lot of planning together, there's a lot of, you know, there's so much involved in marriage. There's so much people haven't told you about marriage and so much that people are not able to tell you before you get married. There's some things that just have to be experienced. You can't, there's no way I would be able to explain it to you and you'd be able to understand it. That is, that is that it is what it is. So um, I'm going to be talking about a few ex unrealistic expectations that people have that we've grown up with, and what we can do because this this is one of the things that's stopping people from getting married, and this is also one of the things that makes people, even after they've gotten married, to be, remain unhappy, to be bitter, to be upset, to be stuck in a rut, to not move forward. It makes them reluctant to work because they feel disappointed. Is this how it is? Is this the marriage? You know, or, or what should I do? And the devil, sometimes he would deceive you into thinking, it's just you. It's just your marriage. That's so bad. Yours is the worst. Everybody else is having it nice. Because the truth is everybody plays up. When we all come out, everybody looks nice. We're all chatting and falling over each other. But that's not what happens at home. That is the truth. No one will tell you what they're facing. No one will tell you the struggles and the problems they're having in their relationships until that marriage breaks down, God forbid. But for the few that have broken down, you find out they have suffered for years. They probably suffered for five years. Some people have suffered for 10 years. Some people more than that. 
and it's only when it's broken down you find out that this has gone on it's gone on and on and on and on and on because everyone acts up like it's all perfect but it's not so I want to discuss the few things for the singles and for the married what are these things that make us build up expectations and how do we manage them now for the singles especially I'll, I'll speak a lot for the females but even for the males because you know the man thinks when I get married to my wife you know she's going to be slain for the 50 years we'll be married she'll be skinny she'll be bright and fair and she will cater to me, she will wash my clothes, wash my underwear, she will always be on hand to clean, to sweep, to cook, she will never get tired, she will never complain, she will never be upset, she will just be like a machine, she will just wash. And she, of course she will, she will satisfy all my desires in the bedroom and everything will just be great. No one was made perfect. No one was no one was made with the ability to do all that. Nobody. Everyone who is even able to attain to that, grew into it, worked hard on themselves and became like that. It doesn't happen in one day. As they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Every man you see who is very cool, you look at him it's like, oh, he's all together. He wasn't born like that. He grew to be like that. He developed character. He developed poise. He, he developed fashion sense, he developed courage, he de everyone had to build themselves up to. So no matter who it is you see today and you admire, that person built themselves up. They weren't born like that and they didn't drop from heaven. So if, if you know, I'm talking for the singles. You, sometimes when you look at the lists, they write, um, um, sing, write um, about their futures, but my dear, I believe in aiming high, you have to have your standards, there are things that you have to have your standards, but the truth is, no human being is going to be able to make you happy. No human, I mean, when I mean happy, I mean going to be able to make you happy 24, 7, 365, for the rest of your life, this person is going to give you joy. I'm sorry, no one. No single human being is going to fulfill you and make give your life a meaning and make you have purpose and fill you with all in all only jesus so when we begin to place those expectations on a human being when we begin to, ex to place those expectations on a man or on a woman we set ourselves up to fail because that person disappoint you yes would that person hurt you yes Marriage is a relationship where you are vulnerable to your spouse. You're vulnerable to your partner. That your partner is able to hurt you and hurt you really badly. Not because the person wants to, but because the person is human. So the person can say something, especially when your spouse is 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 um being frank with you, is being truthful, is being um is being straight with you you know, like straight talk, and it begins to correct or to point out your flaws, very likely it will hurt. You you, you won't believe it. Sometimes when your, your, your partner reprimands you or tells you what, it will hurt. Or doesn't stand up for you when you want him to stand up for you. It, you will feel disappointed. And that is you, it will happen in every marriage. There is no man, no matter how dressed up the person looks, no matter how cool the person is, no matter how much swag the person is, has, there is no man that is perfect. No. There is no man who doesn't have flaws. There is no woman who doesn't have flaws. No matter how beautiful, no matter how elegant, no matter how hardworking, no matter how rich, no matter how anything that person is. We all have our shortcomings. We all have our flaws. We would all hurt our loved ones. We would all disappoint our loved ones at some point. We would all do something that they don't expect at some point. So we have to have, give us ourselves and our partners that space, that ability to fall short. And you would still love that person in spite of it. 
the person will hurt you that day and you still be able to pick up yourself and fulfill your duties and cook and clean and meet the, the, your partner at the point of the need you'll still be able to so it takes a certain amount of maturity to be able to do that without a problem so you know when we when we when, when we are right, a single when we are young, young, this is my expectation this is what I kind of person I want you have to know this person is going to be a human being is not going to be an angel it's not going to be a spirit is going to be a human being is going to hurt it's going to have one or two short comments and it doesn't matter because you have yours so let us not put that responsibility of I want him to make me happy I want him to make my life fulfilled I want him to know when we when we are believing God for our mates we God is going to send us a human being and you, the person might not have it all together even in the physical attributes um character attributes there's some things that you shouldn't mess there's some things that you know are not you can't compromise but there's some things that you would grow together you would learn together the person's character would build would build as time goes on so what you're looking for are the raw materials what are you looking for are the basic things I'm not saying don't aim high, I'm not saying settle for nothing, but what I'm saying is don't have unrealistic expectations. Don't because it would stall you, it would stop you, and at the end of the day you would feel disappointed. I would speak about married people now because so many of us have gone into marriage with the wrong expectations and now we feel bitter. We feel resentful, we feel disappointed, we feel like, oh, is this it? Is this the marriage? Um, everyone talks about, or, you know, if, some people even want out. Some people are like, you know, if I, if I can get out, I'll get out. If I find a way out, I'll, I'll, I'll go out. And you start speaking that language. No, I'm sorry if you had unrealistic expectations. I'm sorry if you're disappointed. Well, this is real life now. We have to deal with those things. So get off your high horse, tear up that paper of unrealistic expectations and begin to deal with what you have. Begin to work with what you have. This, your spouse is a human being, you're always a human being too. Begin to communicate, begin to understand, begin to love, 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 love. Don't forget, God loves us despite our faults. God cares for us despite our faults. We fail God over and over again, but he still picks us up. He still washes us clean. He still uses us. He still blesses us. And he is our father. So let us learn for, from his example. Let us learn from his example. If God can do this, we can do it. So if we love our spouse, we love our hearts, even our children. Do you know, some people even have unrealistic expectations of their children. And this is the truth. Some people, you know, you, expect, you think you're going to have a child who would look like an angel. And then in school, they would, you know. Of course, we all pray, you know, there is a place to pray. There's a place to speak over your children. There is a place for hard work. There's a place to inspire your children. But the truth is, sometimes, you you know, you might have a child who is not doing well in one area or the other. Some people, maybe who are musicians, or who are doctors, or lawyers, you expect to have a child who will study law. You expect your child to be a doctor, you expect your child to be an accountant, you expect your child to be a musician, you expect your child to be something. And your child is not that thing. It's just not. I mean, some people who are CEOs of companies, or even people in ministry, but have a child who, who's, it's just not the person's thing. It's not the person's assignment. And the truth is, you know, when you have that, you feel disappointed. You're like, oh God, after everything, every child God gives you. You know, someone says it's not given to you, it's given through you. So God has sent that child an assignment. He's just come through you. 
So it's not for you to tell that child what that child is going to be or what he's going to do. He's come to fulfill his own assignment. Your duty is to guide him. Your duty is to pray for him. Your duty is to prepare him. Your duty is to help fund his education, help him through life. That's your duty. But you can't tell him what to do. You can't force him to, into your own mold. You can't. So it's that same thing, that same thing. Unrealistic expectations. Let us not place the value we should place on God for a human being. Let us not place the value we should place on God. We shouldn't give that kind of power to a human being. It will not work and it will make you unhappy. It will make you very unhappy. God is your source. God is your sustainer. God is your everything. Do you know that even in providing for you, I know the man is supposed to provide for his home, but when you start looking at this man as your source, you will have a problem. This man is not your source. God is your source. And if it's the woman who is, you know, for any reason, Neither of them, man or woman, none of them is the source. God is your source. So it is God that we look to. Our expectation is from God, not on man. Man will fail. Man will fail. Man will have hard times. Man will have seasons. Man will have testings. Man will have trials. The storms of life will beat against the marriage. In time, it will happen. It will happen. So what do you do? Depend on God. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your eyes on God. Don't look to man. Your relationship with your spouse, I'm sure when, you, when, you, when you're getting married, you have your marriage classes, and they'll tell you what the expectations of his spouse is. It's companionship, it's affection, it is, it is friendship, things like that. And, security, physical intimacy, things like that. Those are the realistic things your spouse should meet. Those are the needs your spouse should meet. But not the needs that God should meet. Those are not the things your spouse should meet. So don't confer on any man that power because he can't meet it. I'm hoping that this has helped someone. I'm hoping that this has helped someone and will help us to grow, to grow in our marriages. It's time to tear those lists, unrealistic lists that we have written and write lists that are realistic, that God can work with. So that when God sends that man, that woman into your life, you would recognize him and it will work out. And so that when you get married, you won't be disappointed. You won't spend one or two years regretting and being annoyed. Rather, you would have a happy marriage because you would put the right expectations on your spouse. God bless you. Remember to subscribe to his YouTube channel at Saint Vlog. Follow him on Facebook at Chukudum. Follow him on Twitter at Chukudum All.